All right. Hello and welcome back to Car Guys. This is the show where me and my dad talk about the latest news to come out with the automotive industry and some crazy stories that come along with it. Starting off here, BMW is making a change to the M3 and the M4 and no, it is not with the front grills, unfortunately. They have provided more details about when all-wheel drive will actually be coming to the platform. This will be introduced into the lineup on the 2022 M3 and M4 competitions. The all-wheel drive cars will have 503 horsepower from a twin turbocharged 3 liter inline 6, but exclusively comes with the 8-speed automatic transmission. So if you want a manual, you'll have to go with the 473 horsepower non-competition rear wheel drive model. But the all-wheel drive does come with a benefit. It takes the car from 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds, which is 0.4 seconds faster than the rear-wheel drive option. And you do have three driving options, which is pretty cool here. You have the default four-wheel drive, the racier four-wheel drive sport, and a drift-encouraging two-wheel drive mode. So even if you have the all-wheel drive competition, you can put in basically a drift mode and slide that thing around, which I think is so cool. That's smart. So I'm not going to lie here, man. These cars have started to grow on me. The more I look at them and the more I see them around and in different colors and stuff, they're not as terrible as when I first saw them, in so my opinion. So the side profile is beautiful. As well the as rear the rear looks outstanding. I love them. The front is just, it's, it, it's really tough. I think it helps having the Euro plate there. Uh, kind of yeah. breaks it up a little, but... It, it, yeah, it's just not too much. Just not as appealing. I agree with you. I now maybe they could do something different with with that area, or maybe somebody's going to come out with like a uh, the the tricolor M3 stuff on some of the blades on oh, that yeah, or that, something that'd, that'd like be that. Cool. Yeah, they might be able to do something cool there. But next year, Toyota is expecting to have 15 electric vehicles by 2025, and here is the first look at what that might look like. Here is the Toyota BZ4X. It is the first of seven vehicles coming under the BZ handle. BZ stands for Beyond Zero, and even though this is a concept, it is expected to come to the U.S. sometime next year. Interesting. You know, the styling doesn't look as extreme as what some others have oh, done yeah. entering the the area. However, I mean, it does look like it's it's probably off like the... I don't know, what, RAV4. RAV4, yeah. Yeah, which, I mean, I have no problems with it being based off that platform. I don't think it looks that bad, to be honest. This is also the first electric vehicle to be made under the to Toyota and Subaru partnership. What it is kind of what they're going for is having like the Toyota electric architecture, but with Subaru's all wheel drive technologies and capabilities. <laughs> Unfortunately, they haven't reached any range or performance numbers and this is kind of interesting. Toyota has also said that an electric pickup truck is coming soon, but did not say any more details. Oh, that's so interesting. Maybe like an electric Tacoma, Tacoma. or something. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. I notice a lot of these manufacturers, it's kind of becoming a trend, is to make like some sort of promise. Have you seen that as well? Like the company that, okay, we're going to have 15 electric vehicles by 2025. Or we're going to have no more internal combustion engines by 2030. Uh, they're probably doing that in response to some of the regulation that's out there, you know, oh, saying yeah. that, hey, you have to ha reduce your emissions by X um, by the, this year. And so that makes uh, by making those statements, you know, they're they're showing intent and, you know, that they've got a goal set to make those reductions. That's my guess. Yeah, that makes sense. I agree 100 percent. Next here is a new vehicle coming from Lexus. This is the 2022 Lexus ES. This is the car's mid-cycle refresh, giving it some minor styling changes, technology upgrades, and fresh new equipment. One of the biggest changes being the new touchscreen and infotainment display. Replacing the touchpad controlled setup from the previous model, there is a standard 8-inch screen and an optional 12.3-inch screen. Now, I didn't know this, but apparently in previous models, you had to use the touchpad. There so was this, no touchscreen. You so had to, you know... It you looks slip, like your yeah. elbow slips. You plan an airstrike is what it looks like. I swear. <laughs> it does look like the touchpad's still there. It is so still there. You can just you can still use the touchscreen as well. So I, that's that's cool. I know that it it does also appear that the placement is in a better spot. Was that what? What did we test drive that that was on? Uh, I don't think I was with you, but you was it you a guys, Lexus? Yeah, it was a SUV. 
Yeah, the what touchpad used to be combat. right next to the shifter, and so you could easily brush it and change what you were viewing on the screen, or or accidentally, oh, yeah. it was just it was a really poor placement. So um, glad to see that it's pushed over a little bit, so that you know that doesn't happen. Now you just have to keep keep tabs on your passenger to make sure they're not changing <laughs> stuff over yeah. there. I do think it would be great to have a a an active. I don't know what kind of button you're talking about, but like a push button um, that you know had a click or you could turn it off and on and then that way the touchpad couldn't get brushed by accident you know that was like oh, right next to yeah. it to activate the Agreed. touchpad it's right there you could just turn it on and then whatever so as far as the outside goes there is a refreshed grill headlights rear bumper design and some new wheel designs and two new gray paint colors <laughs> you can tell the really target audience <laughs> from this but then there is the V6 driven ES350 F Sport, which gets a new dynamic handling package with electronic adaptive suspension and an additional Sport Plus drive mode and a parking assist. I really like this blue color too. Mm. I, I saw that going through all the images. I like it a lot. Here I, we are giving them a hard time good. about their, their additional silver yeah, their gray colors and then this. they've got that. So I don't know, but yeah, it looks good. It's it's honestly it's one of the better looking ESs that I've seen because oh, yeah. typically that one it's pretty uh, subdued. Yeah, so I like yeah. it. I really like what Lexus is doing lately. But now we have more Audi EV news. Oh, that's beautiful. Audi has said they plan to sell a new A6 EV alongside a gas version. The electrified vehicle is aiming to come in 2024 and will be loosely designed off of this concept, which debuted at the Shanghai Auto Show this week. I like it. Yeah. I think it for an electric car, I think it looks great. Very, very sleek. Yeah, I like that car a lot. Especially the really front good. end. They got the front end right. Yeah. Do, do just, you think do you think the logo's backlit up front? Oh yeah. That, definitely. That's, that's Especially because cool. the back one's oh, I backlit. I, yeah, I did I hadn't seen the rear. What's awesome about all these EVs coming from Audi, Porsche, and the Volkswagen group is they're coming on Audi's new premium platform electric architecture, which has both single motor, rear drive, or dual motor, all wheel drive options. And it's co developed with Porsche and will end up being the basis of every, just about every future electric Audi, Bentley, and Porsche for the foreseeable future. The new concept makes 469 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque with an estimated driving range of 300 miles. The Q6 e-tron will also be developed on this and will be revealed in 2021 and be expected to be available in 2023. Next, again, still more electric stuff. This is the first electrified production Genesis. The electric G80 was revealed at the Shanghai Auto Show and is expected to hit the US market in the next year or two. It comes standard with all wheel drive and promises range of more than 310 miles on a full charge. And according to Genesis, the G80 can also reach 80% capacity in 22 minutes and go zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds. Which, I mean, 22 minutes and 4.9 seconds for such a big car, that's that's pretty good. It is good, yeah. It looks like the appointments are really nice, as, as you would yes, expect from course. Genesis. They do a good job. Um, the steering wheel layout is interesting. Yeah, it's kind of <clears> weird. Know, something different. I don't, I don't necessarily mind it too much. It definitely, so where it crosses and, and how it dips down lower on the left and the right mm -hmm. allows you to see more of the screen in front of you, which is good. So yeah. you have the, that part uh, blocked up, but... I don't mind it so much. I'm not a big fan of just the cream color interior anyways, but Agreed. the biggest difference with the two is that the inside of the electric one features mostly recycled materials, model specific digital gauges, as well as a solar panel on the roof, which is something I've been wanting to see for a while. So I think that's pretty cool. I mean, you say lately, but I mean, the, the Genesis coupe was cool. That was oh, the, yeah. the launch with, right? So, yeah. I mean, they, they've got some cool cars. They just, um, they're just not in the masses yet, so you don't you don't yeah. see them that often and and things like that. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been impressed by that brand. Ferrari has confirmed we will see their first EV by 2025. But that's it. They haven't said anything else, of course, because it's Ferrari. So what I'm most interested in is Ferrari makes supercars, not grocery getters. So this is going to be a serious car, I think, with some real potential, but. I'd, I'm curious, where? Do, how do you think this car will take form? Because there's tons of ways they could go with it. It could be like a electric D GTC4 Lusso or something like that. Or it could be like their hybrid car they have out now, the SF90, which is ridiculous. 
Well, where are they at with their conversations around an SUV? Developing. Hmm. It's a small one. I forgot what it's called, but I remember I saw a different article a couple weeks back where they are developing an SUV platform. So uh, that's a possibility that they would launch it with something like that. Yes. Um, and it can, still kind of separates themselves from their sports car uh, grouping. However, they can get a ton of power and a ton of torque out of those things. So oh, it makes yeah. sense that they would use it in one of their cars. But I, I do think that it would probably you know, be in the form of one of their GT cars or something. Yeah, like that. that's the SF90. So that's their current hybrid model. So next, Mercedes EQ line continues to expand. So last week we saw the new EQS. This is the 2023 Mercedes-Benz EQB, which is basically a GLB class, but with electric internals and some different exterior styling, of course. What we see here is a model for just the Chinese market, but it is expected to share much of its styling with the US version. Mercedes is pretty quiet on the details so far, but plans to send these to customers in 2022 as the 2023 model year. Now there are some distinct styling features on the outside to differentiate the EQV from the GLB, but that's about where the changes stop. The interior is just about exactly the same with some few differences between the models. So we have more sad news for those who love the roar of fire spitting engines. Honda plans to axe all internal combustion engines by 2040. All of their vehicles either being 100% battery or fuel cell electric. Manufacturers are making some pretty big commitments, even though the EV game hasn't really been played out super far. That's what I'm kind of worried about is we don't know the long term maintenance of these things for example like how long do these batteries actually last and then what happens when you need to replace the battery on your car like you do your iphone like yeah there's some some uh, information that's out there right now on vehicles that have been around for a while so like the prius yeah and it's very expensive to swap out those batteries oh yeah so so that part they really need to figure out a way to make that a more user-friendly experience so that it's you know you don't have a bunch of costs tied up in the labor aspect of oh, swapping yeah. them and all 100%. of that but uh yeah that's not only like you said the bold statement but you know they've got to start the design work like pretty soon yeah to, to get to that point but what that also means is that they'll be abandoning and not spending resources against the current design work right yeah and so so it's a little tricky considering that the the market as far as availability of charge stations and things like that just isn't there yet and i don't know who is going to to break through with that mm -hmm. if they're smart um yeah. some of the the gas companies that are out there will start putting charge stations in well, yeah, at like their there's... own facilities that you know because otherwise you know things are going to shift away from them 100 so. like there's no reason shell c tomorrow can't become the biggest charging station company in the world outside of politics because those that invest yeah. with them and all of that they're highly interested in making sure that you know gasoline is the fuel of choice and so so it's going to be a fine balance but i do think that some of those especially those that are larger and i think the other game that that could get played out here is they're going to need to have things to do because even though it feels like it takes forever to fuel up your car it's it's a matter of less than less than a couple of minutes to fill oh, up yeah. your car now you've got to dedicate 20 minutes and if you got a line of cars that are waiting to get like oh. you, you need a lot of spaces and then you need something for people to do while they're waiting which is so tesla's done a good job of that because they have the games you can play like there's a game on the tesla thing that you use the steering wheel yeah and it dry like uh, yeah i'm thinking sit down bit. restaurants uh things like oh, that you're thinking so they, they need other things to do yeah. you know uh playgrounds for the kids or whatever like because because waiting 22 minutes while that's groundbreaking for some of the others that have to wait longer um you know it's a lot of time and yeah. and but that time could go away very quickly if you had something else to do like by the time you yeah, get your meal sure. and so they, they figure out okay what meals can we make that we can turn them around in x number of minutes and then and then you figure out maybe you even have either notice on your phone or there's a little screen at your table and it says mm -hmm. when your charging's done you know, oh yeah you go. there you go so i don't know I, I just think that's an untapped market but yeah something that they're going to need to consider if we can keep going down this path and and all the manufacturers are going to be dedicated to electric vehicles a hundred percent 
So next, there's just so much EV news this week, but here from Cadillac, we have the 2023 Cadillac Lyric. This starts at $59,990 and will be available a year from now. At launch, the first models will be available in two colors, steel metallic or stellar black metallic, the interior coming in black or speckled gray. This car comes with an insane 33-inch LED display offering more than 1 billion colors and a 19-inch AKG studio audio system with headrest speakers and active noise canceling. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking to myself, I kind of like that front end. Huh. See, I'm, well, let me, let me correct myself here. I'm, I'm 50-50 on it. It's, I like it and I don't like it at the same time. It's a little much, but then I also kind of like it that it's a little much. It's a Cadillac. Well, yeah, the Lyric uses the same battery system as the Hummer EV and will use a 12 module, 100 kilowatt battery pack. The rear wheel drive coming with 340 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque and more than 300 miles range on one charge. The all wheel drive variant will come later as well as some performance variants, they said. There'll be some V. Yeah. Miles coming. So what's cool about this is that the Lyric can gain 76 miles of range in 10 minutes with fast charging, and the first models come with a 19.2 kilowatt level two charging module, allowing owner's homes to add 52 miles of range per hour. That's allegedly supposed to be one of the fastest home chargers as well for all these electric vehicles out here. The weirdest part about this, which I, I really wanna try it, it has one pedal driving. So you can just ease off the accelerator and the resistance from the electric motors is supposed to slow down the vehicle as well as it generates more electricity. There is still a brake pedal if you need to stop faster as well as a paddle on the steering wheel to bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Yeah, I was talking to a buddy of mine that has a Tesla and he said it was really hard to get used to at first when, when you take your foot off the gas, you don't just coast. It actually, you slow down. It actually yeah. slows for the regenerative braking and everything else. Um, and, but on the flip side, now he says it's weird driving his, he's got a 911 turbo. Mm -hmm. It's weird driving the turbo now because when he takes a foot off the gas, it just keeps rolling. So, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> just... The car also features Super Cruise, which is GM's hands-free driver assistance technology with automated lane change capabilities. And parking assistance will not come at launch, but we have, will be available later via an over-the-air software update. What are your thoughts on these super high-tech, advanced, automated driving systems? I think I think there's pluses and minuses. I personally would never really want to use it. I don't. I like driving too much. I don't want something to drive for me. I think it's got a time and a place, and I think that if you have the ability to fully turn it off, then go for it. Yes, because agree. Because as much as you like driving, how's that traffic? Oh, I hate it. Right. So I what if act, you could do you something go. else in traffic, that right? Makes sense. You let the vehicle do its thing. Traffic. Yeah, exactly. Or uh, maybe long trips as well. Potentially. I agree. But anyways, I, yeah, I think it's got it's got a place. Uh, and for some, it's it's a, you know, it's an unlock uh, yeah. for folks that actually don't have the ability to drive. So, yeah. Next, the awesome Toyota GR Yaris sold out in just 24 hours. We were not expecting this vehicle to hit North America, but it has. It became available for sale in Mexico and sold out of the 300 units available in less than 24 hours. These, these are really cool. It's like a rally inspired hot hatch, basically. The, sadly, it won't be coming to the United States. What do you think of this thing? It's got 257 horsepower, a little hot hatch. I don't like the rear that much, but I mean, the front looks awesome. Yeah, the 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 rear's kind of interesting, but I I do like the the flared you know rear. Yeah, with the, the, it's kind of cool. It's awesome, man. <laughs> yeah. This new limited edition 812 Superfast is the most powerful and highest revving engine ever put in a Ferrari road car. The 6.5 liter V12 revs to 9,500 RPM and produces 818 horsepower. We do not have a name for this awesome car yet as Ferrari is waiting until the May 5th release date to disclose any further information. But 
this car's name the name of the game with this car is aerodynamics you can see the rear glass has been replaced with an aluminum structure with some vortex generators as well as there's a crazy carbon fiber blade on that. the hood there yeah for increased aerodynamic isn't this thing crazy here's the thing a lot of times aero looks like it's like just stuck onto things right yeah. and this is is like form and function Sculpted together right it, it just like perfectly it, yeah the, the design work here is incredible and the way how sleek they've kept it even so though cool. it's got all this active aero going yeah. like that is that that thing is beautiful it's awesome man i love it yeah that is beautiful all angles it, it there's not a single spot that doesn't look good so the one thing with these cars thing. the one thing that kind of bugs me and i don't know i don't know why but why why have a door handle i like knew that? it i, I knew that's what you're gonna say i don't understand that well, how I else really would don't. you see what i do like i like how mclaren does it they kind of hide it behind that extrusion on the top on most of their extreme yeah. models but like that i agree with you i don't know how they could do it right on this style like what where do you think well, it even if be? it's even if it's like frenched in so that it it follows the body line and then when it senses you get closer it raises up sort of like porsche does with their yeah. new but you know something so like cool. that but um yeah that's the only thing that it just sort of looks like it's stuck on there you know yeah. everything else just fits so beautifully and the last story for today we are getting three new chevy c8 corvette color options the first being amplify orange tint coat which is really similar to the sebring orange tint coat it is replacing i i can't really notice a difference when looking mm. at it next is caffeine which is replacing the significantly less loud Zeus bronze metallic. Wait, hold on. How about root beer? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Root beer. <laughs> and then you could get a white top of convertible and it'd be a root beer float. <laughs> and then the last, the last new color option being hypersonic gray metallic, which I, I think looks good. I oh like yeah. That's like, not like bad. Nardo gray. Uh -huh. Which one is your favorite? I'm curious. Uh, probably the orange. Yeah, I agree. A hundred percent. The orange is my favorite. I think my favorite out of all the production colors though, is that blue, that like yeah. light baby blue looks uh -huh. awesome. Well, I saw, I saw the first one I ever saw in person was white and that was a good looking car. All right. And that is it for this week at just car guys. We'll see you next time. Take care. Have a good one.